Hey, what's up, you guys? Great to have you back on the show. I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, I want to take a look at some NBA legends giving their opinion on how good Kareem Abdul Jabbar was. And obviously, we will have a lot of old school guys, but also some guys from the 90s and early 2000s. All right. But before we start with this video, a quick shout out to my Patreons. Thanks a lot, you guys, for supporting the show. And I would say, let's get right into today's episode. Now, the first player's opinion that we're going to take a look at is Dr. J. Julius Irvin. Now, as we know, back in the days, the Lakers and the 76ers didn't get along, which makes Dr. J's comments even more remarkable. Who do you think, out of, out of the guys from your generation, who do, do you think Moses was probably the most well, underrated? No, well, Moses is the most underrated because, you know, Kareem is the greatest. I mean, in terms of centers all time, Kareem is the number one guy. In terms of players all time, Kareem is still the number one guy. You know, he's the guy yeah. you got. He's the guy you got to start your franchise with. Because you get 20 years. You get 20 years, and you get leadership. You get excellence in terms of uh, offensively and defensively, and figuring things out, and and uh, an accomplishment. I mean, you know, his, his numbers speak volumes. And uh, just because he had a bad attitude, there are a lot of people right. who you know who, who disrespect him. But he never had a bad attitude with me. And, you know, I mean, I, I met him back in 1970, and I don't think there's ever been a more potent weapon to step on a basketball court than Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The next player on my list is Magic Johnson. Now, obviously, Magic played alongside Kareem, but he was asked to compare Kareem and Shaq and had the following to say. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the center. You pick yeah. Kareem as number oh. one. So tell me what's the biggest difference. if if. Kareem at his best, Shaq against us, because my top five is close to yours except for one. Okay. Kareem at his best, minus your obviously one, but Kareem at his best, Shaq at his best. Mm. Really? Mm. Tell me why. I mean, he, 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 Shaq was a human specimen. Yes, he was, and I like Shaq, but he was no Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This man could dominate you with both hands. He, they... When they have to change the game because of you, <laughs> that's greatness. And we have to remember, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar won three national championships in a row in college. And it could have been four if freshmen were allowed to play. The man was just so dominant. The next clip that we're going to take a look at is from my favorite NBA show, NBA Open Court, and they discuss the greatest signature moves in all time, and naturally, Kareem is one topic. The sky hook. Yeah, I mean, Abdul Jabbar. Unbelievable. I, I, first of all, I'm surprised that nobody, nobody's ever done it, tries to do that shot. Lots of I'm other not, kinds of hooks, but surprised. no one's ever gotten the sky hook. <laughs> no one's got, but the thing I'm about right. Kareem, when you, when you look back at some of those, those games and those iconic moments where he hits those shots, I mean, he's, he's hitting deep ones. I mean, he's hitting from 15 feet, that sky hook. And you know it's coming. You know what he's going to do. You know, he's going to give you a little shoulder or whatever, but he's going to that sky hook. And I, I don't know if there's ever a play or a shot in the history of the game that, um, that scored one as many points. And two, it was just, you couldn't guard. You couldn't guard it. And, uh, I mean, he, I'm just surprised that more big guys don't try to work on that shot. I know it takes a lot of finesse, a lot of touch, um, but... I mean, it's, it's one of those things that I'm even thinking, why did I work on that? I mean, that shot right there was unbelievable to, to defend. I'll tell you what makes that shot so difficult to guard. First of all, you got a guy who's 7'2", with incredible balance. It takes a great balance to execute that type of shot and the fluidity to come through. Because once you get up there, he's up there all alone. And there's no way you're going to block that shot. But he stayed within an area, you talk about staying in that box, and that's what Kareem did. And it was just an unguardable shot. And again, a guy at 7'2 with that type of mobility, that type of talent, and athleticism at that size, <clears throat> he wasn't gonna block There's it. There's a big guy, just to go big guy's it. battling with you, and you're going off one leg, the strength and the balance. But, but I will say the space. Awesome. But where's your shoulder pointed at? Oh, at the basket. Yeah, so yeah. when, at the basket. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the whole key, like with Kareem, exactly. He would get you, he would get you, and 
And then he had got so good at it, like all of you have, where, okay, I figured out, like, if I can't get my shoulder around, okay, now, intellectually, right, I can now change yeah. and say, okay, I got to shoot it two more inches over here. So, Scotty, I want to pick your brain. What do you think are some of the most unguardable moves you've ever seen or played against? Let's see, who got the most points in the league? Kareem. Oh, Akuda yeah. <laughs> Skyhook. <laughs> Sky, the Skyhook is the answer. That's Why the don't, answer. Okay, so this is my question. Why don't any players today develop that? If it truly is the most unguardable thing anyone's ever come up with, why aren't we seeing it? We've seen some you know what? sort of mid-baby ones, but no one who can really do it. I, I think that, that shot kind of escaped the game, kind of left with the, the great one because there's no one really teaches it. Um, I've seen guys use jump hooks, but not the sky hook. Right. I He's mean, tried to teach it to I was going to say, guys we've had, we've, we had Kareem on the show quite a bit, which is awesome. And, I, I mean, look, he said he's available. Right? Yeah, I mean, and secondly, uh, Kareem was one of the greatest scorers in this game. So you have to be a scorer to even try to. The level of good you have to be to even get there? Accept that, that shot, you know? The next player that we're going to take a look at is Micah Cooper, again a teammate of Kareem. He played for 11 seasons with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now, obviously, he watched Kareem day by day, so his opinion is a very valid one. Now, let's have a look. I'm a huge LeBron James fan, but Allen Iverson, size-wise, the grit that he had and he brought to the game, who's yours? You know, that's pretty tough because there's been I've seen a lot of great players before I even got to playing, and then now that um, I have to go with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He had the most unstoppable shot, uh, could do a lot of things at a young age. Uh, um, Harvey, you have to get Kareem. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Because when I played against all these guys, we hated them. We hated each other. And, you know, Kareem and I, Kareem was like the greatest player I ever played against by far. Do you miss Kareem? Well, not, I miss not seeing, not seeing him out there. As a, person. as a person. He was a great player. Oh, no question. The greatest. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Number 33. Sky hook goggles and low top seat. <laughs> I don't believe my eyes. What a play! Oh, what a pass to Cooper who scored! How did he see it? I think that uh, every team needs an anchor, and I think on that team he was their anchor. It wasn't showtime with 30 seconds of going to tie game. They're slowing the ball up and throwing it right into Kareem. The ball goes into Kareem at four. I don't think Kareem knows it. Three, now he knows it. A 15-footer, good! It's into Kareem. Kareem, swing left, right hand, 12-footer, good! He was just the stabilizer and the foundation of their whole franchise and dynasty. Kareem was definitely a physical player, but he revolutionized the center position, uh, I think, with his finesse. I think that it was unique to see a big man with so much finesse as he had. I remember him just making one of the toughest shots in the game, and that's the sky hook. He let you bump him, and he just took his time and took a step out and gave you a hook shot from 15 feet out. That's a hook shot. Unbelievable. Oh, my. What a hook shot. What a shot. He flipped it over his head, and the darn thing went right through. Seven seconds. Nichols. And sky hook. Oh! Kareem with a big pressure shot. I've never seen anyone shoot, make two sky hooks in a game. I've never seen that in the NBA. And actually, if you take a sky hook and miss it, someone will think you're not being serious because of how difficult that shot is. I think the unique thing about his sky hook is that he brings his arm all the way out, and with his wrist, he flicks it. And uh, he doesn't cheat where a lot of us just come up and try to guide the ball in. He really shoots the ball and follow through is like a jump In shot. one of my recent episodes, I covered how Isaiah Thomas changed his mind about Micah Jordan from back in the days until today. So back in the days, Isaiah Thomas was 100% sure that Micah Jordan was the GOAT, but he changed his mind. Now let's hear who's the greatest. But the greatest player to ever play this game is Kareem Abdul-Jamar. And we're, we are dismissive of Kareem because every single stat that you throw up He's at the top. As some of you guys might know, I also have the Basketball Time Machine podcast, a show where I talk with former NBA players. And it's very interesting whenever I talk about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, no matter how big the superstar was, they were all at all once it comes to meeting Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And anytime people get a chance to be around him and learn and read stuff that he puts on paper, they should do it. Because to me, he's a very intelligent he's man. He's a also. very intelligent yeah. man. Super intelligent. He was, yeah. he, 
he and Nate Archibald, obviously being from New York City, those were my two idols growing up. And he was the first, only person, honestly, that when I played in the NBA, I was in awe when I walked on the court.